clinical examination first, history second, and only thereafter clinical ultrasound. Always please do it like that. Normal or slightly ectatic CBD conduct in 4.8.2, no signs of augmented tubular pressure at all. This is Schollingiectasia only. A long intrapancreatic portion of the DHC in 4.8.3, it is so to say too well visible and slightly distended with colics in the patient too. Slightly but significantly dilated CBD in 4.8.42, please note the lack of impression by the right branch of hepatic artery. Note in 4.8.5 dilatation of and sludge in the CBD and little arabilia only. Re-EST was needed. Please note the fine anatomy in 4.8.6 and note especially the spontaneous normal movements. You see wrong measuring in this case 4.8.7. It is not perpendicular to the CBD axis. Pressure conditions are rather evaluated by duct morphology than by pseudo-precise measuring. This case 4.8.8 nicely displays anatomy, an anterior to the CBD crossing of the hepatic arteries right branch, a variant which can be observed in about 5% of all cases. Here in 4.8.9 Dilatation due to increased tubular pressure is obvious. Please note as a landmark the right branch of the arterial hepatica and realize that the obstacle must be at the papilla location and indeed a papillary carcinoma was found endoscopically. Erbilia and residual congestion and the normal right branch of arterial hepatica intercrossing are noted here in 4.8.10. In 4.8.11, a lack of DHC arterial impression to the vena portae is demonstrated as a reliable sign of enhanced tubular pressure. Just observe carefully, so-called measuring is not really needed. In 4.8.12, normal pressure conditions in the CBD show a not so rarely seen impression of the vena portae. A typical artifact in 4.8.13 results in this portal right branches aspect. It is hit by the beam erect angularly, thus it is hit strongly and creates the so-called blooming artifact. This picture in 4.8.14 obviously demonstrates again normal ductal pressure conditions outrooting a biliary outflow obstacle. Note again the 5% variant. Ductal pressure and duct morphology are normal again in 4.8.15. In this harmless variant, an intercrossing 
of the right RTIA Partica branch before the DHC. This year in 4.8.16 is a much more serious normal course of the right hepatic artery branch but no more any CBD at all. This is substituted by tumor tissue completely. Normal anatomy again once more and please note the variant of arterial intercrossing. Once more as shown in 4.8.70, should injectasia is rather to be observed than pseudo accurate measuring. Cologistic to me in this old lady was decades ago. Erebilia and residual sludge were observed here in 4.8.18 and here it was an echoscopic control after EST and scopic sphincterotomy documenting that re-EST is needed. Another sign of pressure enhancement is noted in 4.8.19 significant distension of the CBD configuration intrapancreatically shortly before the papilla of fato. In here in 4.8.20 and 21 you see endoscopically an incarcerated concretion and as a consequence endoscopic sphincterotomy. Just a reminder in another case of fine anatomy in 4.8.22. Enlarged lymph nodes and slightly distended and slightly echogenicity in the CBD in the end a CCC was found in 4.8.23. The same holds true with the pancreatic carcinoma as a source in 4.8.24. Normal anatomy once more in 4.8.25 displayed nicely in ERCP with the intercrossing branch of Arteria hepatica. To resist rise in tubular pressure is easy in the ureter left, whereas in bile ducts enlargement immediately happens since they are without any structured smooth muscle fibers right for the observer respectively. HE staining shows smooth muscle fibers yellowish. This is demonstrated in 4.8.27 immediately before left side and during right side ERCP. This again shows figure 4.8.27 28 in another case of Dohoblai thiasis, thus indicating the need for EST. A normal hilum 2 in figure 4.8.29, however, in sections rectangular to normal flank sections to show the aspect named after a famous cartoon mouse. The left eye, so to say, as seen from the patient, is the hepatic artery, the right eye is the DHC, and beyond these you find the nose. A variant of the right arterial branch and a distension of the DHC are here displayed.
a medium dilated DHC and an arterial variant are displayed here in 4.8.31. Transverse sections in 4.8.32 show a case immediately after EST. Please note wall thickening and lack of aerobilia as indicators for too careful a handling of EST. Exactly in the same sections, a similar case is documented in 4.8.33 with marked wall thickening as well. Measuring is arbitrary and unprecise again in 4.8.34. Please note again how helpful anatomical orientation in CF is. In 4.8.35 it is noteworthy first the undercrossings of hepatica branches in a double fashion as a variant and second a discrete but clear dilatation of a DHC. Note the cystic in here, in 4.8.36, clear signs of chronic pancreatitis are present in addition to DHC dilatation. Note the lack of pancreas parenchyma and the correspondingly small distance of uh, arteria gastrodurinalis to vena renalis confluence. The same holds true in 4.8.37 with reduced pancreas parenchyma and an otherwise fine and normal anatomy in CF. Note the same features in 4.8.38 confluence normal DHC and normally compressed vena leonaris. Artifact color spots in the slightly dilated DHC in 4.8.39 with enhanced echogenicity and interpreted as hemobilia subsequent to Mengini puncture the other day. Gastroduodenal artery and confluence are normal in CF. Slightly echogenic material in the DHC in 4.8.40 due to a known primary sclerosing cholangitis PSC. Again, unprecise and arbitrary measurement of the latest DHC in 4.8.41. DHC dilatation at all and the hypoechogenic mass in 4.8.42 are seen clearly. In the end, it was a pancreatic malignancy. DHC dilatation to a nearly twofold diameter of DHC compared to the diameter of vena portae and dilated intra pancreatic ducts were found in 4.8.43. These sections in 4.8.44 demonstrate arterial gastrinalis, somewhat dilated DHC, and some transversely hit vessels of unclear naming. Sludge and wall thickening after EST are found in 4.8.45 in this DHC. The same holds true in 4.8.46 with the corresponding clinical feature. Note the discrete hilum lymph adenopathy. DHC blocking in 4.8. 8.47 was in the end due to a CCC, a 
carcinoma. In these two different cases in 4.8.48 A and B, tumor thrombosis in both cases caused these venous occlusions. An HCC affecting the course of the distended DHC is seen in 4.8.49. An asymptomatic stone can be found as a rare exemption in a non-dilated DHC as in 4.8.50. On the other hand, in 4.8.51, a grossly dilated DHC had to be diagnosed once more again. Note the otherwise correct anatomy. And these sections in 4.8.52 present a grossly dilated DHC in addition to a small tumorous mass in the head of the gland and a thrombosis of vena lienals. Once more again a well-functioning plastic stent is seen and a residual double shot phenomenon only in figure 4.8.53. These sections in 4.5.54 demonstrate how low the difference of echogenicity can be in the small pancreatic tumors ventrally in this case to conference. DHC is no more distended as it had been previously in 4.8.55 and it is marked in its course by a well-functioning plastic stent. Gross dilatation and sludge filling of the DHC are seen in 4.8.56. Please note again how helpful arterial intercrossing is for anatomical orientation. In here, in 4.8.57, however, it is an arterial hyperperfusion not so seldom in cirrhosis, misinterpreted as DHC at the first glance. Good old Abraham Fater had to do his studies without echographia.